Chronicles Live in 5, 4. Welcome, one and all, to the Gamers at Large podcast. Here we are with episode 27. Took a brief hiatus due to circumstances beyond our control. And we're back. We're back with the people starting from my left to my right. Games Rosa, do your thing, bro. Hey, everybody. Games Rosa, Mega Gamer Man, anything you want to call me. Back at you once again. Finally, after three weeks, I have to say. But um, glad to see everybody's back here. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this episode. A lot to talk about after all these three weeks. Okay. And up next, we got a man who's Butterworthy. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, guys? Jimmy Butterworth here, a.k.a. Butterworthy, of course. I'm excited to be back with Gamers at Large after a bit of a break. Alrighty, and up next we got Mr. T. Mr. T, do your thing. Hey, fools, it's Mr. T of the Mr. T Show. Uh, glad to be back after a little hiatus. I've been under the weather myself uh, this week, but I'm ready to go. Alright, and up next we got Shadow Fox. Shadow Fox, do your thing, bro. I've been ninjing for a while, so I've been avoiding this podcast, but I'm, I'm finally back and I'm ready for action to discuss these topics. Let's go. Oh, he's been avoiding us. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> hey, up next we got Zen, the Zen Gamer. You guys already know who it is. Ninja the Zen Gamer, one and only king of logic here again in the Gamers at Large uh, podcast. Let's talk some games, huh? All right. And finally, QMC, that be me, Kwame Manchu. Let's do this thing. All right. Starting off with a topic that, I, you know, is near and dear to my heart, which I find very interesting. And it's basically what's been going down in the house of Mario. Uh, it seems that uh, Ubisoft was checking out, as well as other people were checking out, uh, you know, which were the top ser- um, series they were selling out since 2005. And it looks like Mario placed number two. What do you guys think of that out of all the franchises? Sounds like common sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty being number one. <laughs> no surprise there. <laughs> no, but it's interesting to see a first-party character place rank so highly. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're talking uh, uh, sales-wise. Sales-wise, yes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm not that surprised. Um, although I'm a little surprised it's that high, but uh, coming off. The Wii success and the DS success, you know, Mario obviously sold gangbusters on both of those systems. Um, it's not, you know, overly surprising because of the success of those hardware, you know, so. Well, I mean, realistically talking here, let's be real. Freaking Mario is rehashed. I mean, I don't know what you people are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. you, you're, you're telling me this thing is number two behind Call of Duty? What the hell? What? No, nobody plays that anymore. Nonsense. Trash. Hey, and realistically, though, when you even look at you know uh, the 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 attach rate period, it was really high for for the Wii and even the Wii U right now. I mean, if you look at New Super Mario Brothers U, it's it's over a fifty percent attach rate, which is just ridiculous mm-hmm. for, for new hardware. I don't think there's any there's any game, any eighth generation game that's close to that right now. Especially first party. Especially first party. There, de- there definitely isn't one. I think the closest one is a Nintendo Land, and that's another Wii U game. So. Mm-hmm. We Fit, by the way, placed number six. Mm. 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 That wow. that right there is interesting too. Because of oh. those ridiculous numbers. Yeah, I mean, we're talking what thirty million uh, mm. per per game. Uh, there's two. What was there's two We uh, We Fits on the uh, We. Mm-hmm. We Fit and there's We. Uh, what was the we other Fit one? Plus. We Fit Plus, right, right. So, damn, you know, <laughs> success. <laughs> Lots yeah. and lots of fit gamers. You know, the thing is, I find you know what I find interesting about that also? Just Dance also placed up there in number 13, and that's from Ubisoft. I mean, all, all this, you know, motion control exercise craze that's going on, maybe there's something to the whole wellness thing that Nintendo's trying to come up with. Makes sense to me. And, you know, the sad thing, I think, um, uh, I don't know how well we, uh, we Fit You is doing, Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it's the best version by far because, dude, I I have the uh, pedometer. I take that thing with me all the time. I, I keep track. I I you know I go in uh, the, the every night. You know, because you're supposed to, you know, check in at it's the same time. Uh, you know, for your as far as your uh, your metabolism and all that goes, it's good to check in uh, the same time every day. Um, and you know, I, I go through and it's it just. It's pretty cool to be able to, 
you know, keep track of it, uh, something like that digitally. And uh, to have that, um, the, the Wii Fit pedometer, I mean, that's a cool little device. Because, um, you know, it has all these different purposes. Obviously, it keeps track of your steps and your, your calories burned. So you have that. But then you can also upload it and um, say you set a certain you set a certain weight loss goal. Uh, the, you know, the Wii Fit will tell you, uh, uh, you can upload your data. If you haven't reached the, the calorie intake for the day, the Wii Fit will say, okay, we got a, a, a bunch of, a bunch of exercises you can do to, uh, to finish out that calorie intake. Mm. Or that, that calorie burn. I'm like, man, that, that's just an awesome thing to have. It, it keeps you on track. You know, um, you know, I'm not, you know, 800 pounds or anything. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about vanity pounds I'm trying to burn here, basically, at this point. But, you know, it, it's good because it keeps you in shape. Um, and you, you don't really have to think about it too much. And, it, you know, it's like, it's, like a, it's like having a Wii Fit trainer, you know, that you can take with you now. Hey, wait a minute, though. But don't you have to take off all your gold chains first to get an accurate measure? <laughs> <laughs> with the gold. With the gold. <laughs> <laughs> Three pounds without the gold. I always weigh myself with the gold, folks, because uh, <laughs> that gold will never come off. I just, you know, compensate for the weight of the gold. Oh, okay. So he's he's doing like Piccolo, the way Piccolo exercises, keep the weight on. Exactly, exactly. It helps uh, build that muscle. <laughs> I, I can't say I've had I've had the same kind of good experience. And and the the thing that I liked about it the most is that. You know, you can do it at any time. Like you, it doesn't require a TV, so you can just you can go ahead and point it at the the uh, the scanner on the um on yeah, the exactly on, on the on the gamepad itself, and it'll still pull up everything you need. You can check your weight. You can do whatever. You can actually do the vast majority of the games with the gamepad, not even needing a TV. So mm-hmm. that was, you know that that's the best thing to me. So anything can be going on in the house, and you can still check in. It doesn't stop your workout. Right. So. Uh, you know, I come home and the, the wife is watching, you know, that trash TV. <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't want to interrupt that because trash TV will come re- real, real TV for me if I mess with her while she's watching that. So there are real housewives. There is love. Exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. Lord. So I, I come home and uh, I can just, you know, you know, she can keep watching her thing, whatever. I just grab a game pad and, you know, upload my steps and uh, do whatever exercise I have to do right from the game pad, you know. Why she doing, you know, why she keep doing her thing, you know, that's that game pad advantage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 The only thing you're missing is uh some of some of the routines. You I mean you could put you, you can put the camera side by side so you can watch yourself to see how you're yeah. you kinda need a TV for that, but you know, yeah, you yeah. don't really need you don't necessarily need that. It's just an added plus to kind of make you make you more engaged, but I, I, so far, I like it, and I, I I don't see why it's not. It should be selling well on the eShop, but Nintendo is not going to release those numbers. So. No, no. Mm. Well, speaking of Nintendo's numbers, what do you think about this whole thing about the Wii U using almost as much elect, you know, about as much as electricity as a nightlight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got one thing to say. Nintendo spent over a billion dollars on R and D just for the CPU and the GPU, and they did it for a reason. And it wasn't to waste power. So. That's, there you go. That's what they'd have you believe. Like I said before, they're aliens. <laughs> 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 no, but I'm just looking at the dramatic power draw difference that there is, you know, between like the PS4, for example, compared to the PS3. You have uh, 64 versus 181 watts. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow, that does make a difference. I mean, to kids out there playing the games and whatever, you guys don't care. You're not the ones that foot electric bills or anything. Oh, like your house. <laughs> but <laughs> trust me, to your parents, it makes a difference after a while, especially when you got a kid breaking on six to eight hours of gaming. Just imagine, though, if, if you have all three, right, mm-hmm. and he literally turns on each and every one. Mm. <laughs> that, <laughs> there you go. Oh, Lord. It, I, to me, I find it funny how the Wii U has less power than the Wii, and yet you see with the PS3 with and PS4 that it increased by, like, 100. Oh, hold, yeah. let me fix that real quick before the drone will start. Oh, oh. The Wii U's weaker than the Wii. Now, what he's saying is the, the, the power consumption is uh, uh, less than even what the Wii uh, consumed. So oh, yeah. still can have greater performance than... It's still, so exactly. Exactly. Performance per uh, wattage ratio is it's a lot higher on the Wii U. 
in other words. And, but, and you wonder why those other consoles, when they get a little warm, they start sounding like jet engines. <laughs> <laughs> that means that there's more likely to be wear and tear on the consoles at a quicker rate than there would be on the Wii U. There would be a lot quicker wear and tear. Well, uh, red rings, we like red rings. Red rings work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm sensing a little bit of deja vu here. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it really makes me wonder what they're going to do with the successor of the Wii U as far as their TDP, how low they're going to have it. Oh, man. I, that kind of scares me because I kind of think they're going to go, like, ultra low power since all the CPUs are going that way. Mm -hmm. But that's that's going to pigeonhole them in the same corner they're in right now, though, because nobody's going to want to... Be the high-watt power king. Yeah, everybody's going to want to develop for, you know, um, things with, with uh, more shaders going on and more in, in, in parallel processing. And if you're going low power, you're going to kind of divert away from that, even if you have, like, so Wii U is kind of like a Super Nintendo. It's got a lot of co-processors to help do things. Mm -hmm. And I, that just means that people are going to have to learn how it works. And, and in this in this port station environment with all these developers out here, that's that's kind of a detriment for them. In, in a way, for for games, but not for them internally. And whoever partners with them, you know, whoever becomes a second party developer or publisher for them, it'll be great. But third party, if you're under a major publisher, not so much. So basically, unless you're an indie, you know, your game is not going to run as well as it will on the the other platforms that are that are like, hey, here's all this extra power for overhead. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something they should be pointing out to people, to the consumer, letting them them know that this is something they care about because we live in an environment where a lot of a lot of young people even uh, are starting to care about this kind of thing you know about the environment and how power consumption and wanting to be greener and all that stuff this is something they should be throwing a commercial out there saying hey we, we have the, the least power consuming video game console out there you know yeah, Apple does that it. could be a selling point you know yeah Apple does, think Apple green. Does it all the time we're green yeah. low carbon footprint Green is one of those. It's one of those, uh, you know, catch uh, phrases for, uh, for marketing. We're greener. We're green. That's one of those things that they could use for you know, to sell this thing. And they can release mm -hmm. a, a green console at the same time, a physically green console. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Make it the year of Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> green Yoshi Wii U, you know, because we can. <laughs> there we go. But you know, like I said, it's things like this that you know, like you know. They're starting to interest a lot of gamers now as of late, it seems. You know, trying to find the greener console, trying to find lower power consumption because they plan on being on the game a long time, mm -hmm. you know, less wear and tear, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm surprised that, you know, this is not brought out as often as it should be. Oh, uh, I would also like to note that the Xbox One has the highest TDP out of all the consoles. It, it makes sense by to me. A large, by a large margin. If you no look surprise. At it, it says depending on TV mode usage, it could go all the way up to 289. Well, you know why it doesn't surprise me? Did anybody see the size of the fan when they opened the Xbox One about a year and a half ago? Yeah, it, I, use, I use it to cool my car down. It, yeah, <laughs> it covers the entire surface area. It looks like a carburetor fan. Like, it's, it's really wow. That's well, bad. You know, the, 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 the biggest, baddest consoles have to have, you know, high heat and all of that. But I don't want this to offend anybody, but America. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight up. That's straight up, yep. Heartbeat of America. There you go. <laughs> the country where everybody wants to drive a Hummer even though there's hardly any gas to go around. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But anywho, anybody else got any topics for tonight? Now, we've been well, gone for three weeks, fellas. Come on. Why don't, why don't we move on to the leaked E3 lists next? Okay, let's do that then. I'll let you handle that, Jamie. <laughs> well, he, there were lists leaked for each company. Now, there were three lists leaked for Nintendo. Um, I don't know if there were multiple lists leaked for the other guys, but I haven't heard about them. Um, since we're Nintendo-centric, of course, anyone can discuss whatever they want to, um, mm -hmm. but the things that have been leaked on lists for Nintendo are things like... Star Fox coming for the Wii U. Um, you know, X releasing... The, well, X is already going to release this year, but but X final title of Xenoworld. Uh, Metroid for the 3DS. Mario Party U. Uh, and, like, a big list of things that really get us all excited about it. Mm. So that means... You know that what said? <laughs> What's that? You said Xenoworld? Xenoworld is what the... Uh, 
tentative name is according yeah, to Disney's multiple. A third different history. name I've heard. I've, I've heard Xeno World and uh, Xeno Gears Origins and. Yeah, um, I've heard I'm, Xeno Gears Origins is is unlikely. It's not now, gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen actually no, excuse me, I've seen four different Nintendo lists. Um, they all have about the same sort of stuff on them. One that I thought was really interesting had a logo for the new Zelda title for Wii U and a different mm-hmm. name for it. You know, they had the ones like Shard of Nightmare, which is, to be honest, a horrible name. That sounds yeah. really bad. Yeah, but the other one actually sure had a logo to go with it. Logo looked legit to me, and the actual name on it was the Lost Prophet. Mm. You know, Lost Prophet just doesn't sound very zealot to me. <laughs> it sounds more Chrono Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? The Shard of Nightmare one, the only reason why that sounds legit is because uh, there are two games with uh, with Nightmare um, characters in it. Um, they're actually referred to as Nightmares. So, I, to me, that would kind of make more sense. I don't know about Shard. I don't Shard, know that that's, that's what's getting me. The Shard yeah. part. <laughs> that just doesn't sound right. In other words, mm. the, the grammar butters you. Yeah, the grammar <laughs> butters you. The, the actual name, the, 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 the character name makes sense because if it's saying Shard of Nightmare, that would mean that some of the Nightmare creatures are returning to the franchise. Excuse mm. me, it's, uh, I messed up the name. It's not Lost Prophet, it's the Lost Oracle. Oh, uh, okay. All right, now that's better. That's better. Lost yeah. Oracle works. Yeah, that's... That that would tap into my Oracle of uh, Ages, Oracle of Seasons vibe there. Yep, yep. <laughs> but looking at the same list here, they've got any SNES remix on it, uh, a title called Me Adventures. They've got Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask HD on there, Kid Icarus the Moon of Doom, Animal Crossing You and Me, as in M-I-I, mm. uh, Metroid U, Pokemon Uranus, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uranus. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. F Zero United and Galaxy Squad United. Oh man, so, that is so juvenile, but it's funny. Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how legit that list is, but the logo I've got in front of me looks pretty awesome. I gotta say. Mm, well, yeah, somebody must be doing a good job in Photoshop. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. You know, some of this could be true, and this just looks like a shotgun blast of everything that could possibly be announced. So it doesn't matter what is announced or what isn't, I'm right. So, <laughs> you know, I just don't know what to make of it. Here's the thing that bothers me the most. Out of all the years of Nintendo having and having built this legacy of super secrecy, why now that everything just seems to be leaking out? They can't control it at all. I de- it just seems very sudden. So you want to know something, Zen? Though um, it's just like many of this stuff has actually happened before, because with the whole like 3DS thing, and also with the Wii U, because it was like that. Okay, it's gonna have like um, a touchscreen controller. 3DS is gonna be 3D. Uh, so you know it. Like I don't know. For some reason, they kind of lose this information during like when E3 is coming. For some reason, I guess the people just yeah. the, 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 the question I want to ask is what changed. From the old days to now, who changed? Who's working there that wasn't there before? Whose responsibility is this? And why the hell are they lapsing at their jobs? That's the thing I want to ask. Different now. We, we, don't, we don't know for sure that that you know this is going to happen. First of all, yeah. so, yes. this is pretending it's real, of course. Of oh, course. okay. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I see, just one of the things. One of the things is that in the, in the the E three industry now. So now you have. Now that the E3 has access to all this stuff, they have to release information to the the verified attendees and the press that's going to be there. Mm. So all it takes is somebody on the inside, once they get one of these, to go ahead and put this on my phone and send it out. Um, Mm. The the other thing being that last week was Judges Week for the press. So all the games that are supposed to be the hit games that are going to get demos or or going to get big uh, reveals and things like that during E3, they were already seen last week. Yeah. So they've already they've already got a list of everything. They've already seen half of everything before E3 started. So yeah, I, I'm I'm not surprised it didn't actually happen earlier. Yeah, I mean, in like game, game set, was, I think it was games that said um, the leaks aren't new. I mean, obviously these if these leaks are true, the amount of leaks would be unprecedented for Nintendo. But yeah, uh, I remember 
you know, even back for the GameCube, we were talking about the, the console was going to have it handle. I mean, like, people were like, what the hell? <laughs> How's it going to handle? What, what, what would it need a handle for? Like, nobody so, believed that. Nobody believed that, but it it came out and it had a handle. And the same thing for the DS. Like, you know, all we knew it was the DS, but we didn't know. Uh, Nintendo didn't confirm. Well, well then they called it the Nitro. Right. And, yeah, the Nitro. And then uh, 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 people, were, it was leaked that it, this console was going to have two screens. And I remember thinking, that's free. that's crazy. That's not going to happen. It's going to do with two screens, you know. Hmm. And I was that thinking side by side, you know, two screens side by side. Didn't make any sense to me. <sighs> but uh, obviously the DS came out and it had two screens and it was a uh, success. So the leaks have happened. It's just like, if this is true, this would be uh, an unprecedented amount of leaks, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Very un Nintendo like for sure. Very I, I think it's an industry thing more so than a Nintendo thing. It's just that, you know, the industry is now the press is so privy to information now than it was say maybe fifteen years ago that everything's early now. So because these people were they're doing press kits, they're prepping, like people started setting up their tables and stuff at E three to record video and everything like two weeks ago. So mm. it, it's stuff like that is happening now instead of people just showing up and, and and giving information once they get to the floor. Yeah. So it, it, that's part of the problem. But um, it, it, I think it, as far as Nintendo way. goes, though, this would be a surprise because that's one of the things they're trying to target is controlling the message, you know, with the the directs. That's why the media. That's one of the main reasons the media doesn't like Nintendo right now. It's because they don't get they don't get exclusives for Nintendo, you know, because mm. Nintendo they'll drop a, a announcement of a direct. And it's gonna be tomorrow at eight eight a.m. You know, so and the and the press hate the fact that they got to scramble to go, you know, cover that. So uh, I still, yeah, I think I think even with the you, know, you know the change of uh, you know the way information is given, uh, the, the speed, it, you know, the speed that we get information now because of the internet and all that. I think even with that, uh, the fact that you know Nintendo is is doing things to to uh, still remain secret and. This, this amount of stuff is still coming out. It's kind of, you know, yeah. baffling. Miss T, I thought about that too. However, what if the only things that were leaked were things that are going to be on the show floor? Mm. So mm. that may be why they have a list of things that are going to be there because there may be like private demos and lines and stuff like that and, and um, private uh, or maybe public demonstrations mm. of games that are coming out later this year or next year. Mm. Yeah. And I was thinking, what what if the the leaks are uh, you know on purpose from Nintendo to throw people off? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that, could that, too, that could be the case. Metroid too. Dread, I think, was an intentional leak by Nintendo. Uh huh. And that never happened. So. Mm. I'm gonna tell you something right now, though. Me, as long as Xenoblade, you know, um, Xenoblade um, Chronicles sequels coming out this year, I'm good. I'm good too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much good to go there. That game, that game can get you for like six months. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Shoot. Now the thing is, though, you know, there have been different types of rumors regarding X, as far as like, you know, them going for a Skyrimish type of appeal. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Also, I mean, so far the way it looks right now looks great. They don't need to change anything else and try to add like all this whiz bang. We don't need all these extra shaders or explain why the graphics look better. We don't need that. We know it's going to look better. So mm-hmm. just make the game big. If it's online co-op, great. If not, then I'll go with how the game was on Wii. I- I'm fine with that. There you go. Same here, pretty much. Well, on- online co-op would be pretty nice. That yes, would be. Would. <laughs> th- that would be sweet. But like I said, if it was along the veins of uh, Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide, where you got drop in, drop out co-op, where it doesn't affect your um your level progression, I say perfect. Yeah. You know what? I- I don't want the PSO type where y'all got to get all together, y'all got to get in the lobby first, then go together, and as soon as you go in together, one one guy drops, and, and guess what? You still got all these level 200 people you got to fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Is he, the, the thing that you guys are saying, you guys are saying you know, it would be fine if it doesn't have online and pretty much mirrors what Xenoblade Chronicles was. I agree with that. I'm cool with that. Whatever it is, I'm cool with it because it's going to destroy my life anyway, but... <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah. It, it kind of does need to have online for various reasons, but for the most part, I just don't want to deal with all the whiners anymore. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so just give them what they want. So, you know, they don't talk. We're happy. Cool. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, the ones who are never going to buy the game, who still right. want to whine over something. <laughs> yep. Have something to whine about. <laughs> I think the one, the one game I really want an online version of, and I hope it's true because there's only like three of these lists, is Mario Party U. I oh, want an online oh, Mario Party oh. game. I really do. I'm going to tell you. game where you talk crap. Friendships <laughs> will be destroyed. That one will need that one would need voice chat. And they no. better have they better have uh, extra Wii U game pads out by. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> while we're at it, why isn't there an official card game on on Wii U eShop? Wasn't Nintendo a card company a long time ago anyway? Why isn't there a card game that's online? <laughs> we can I mean, give us at least a Bat and Kaidos. You know, it would be nice just to say if there was a Yu-Gi-Oh game on there. Yeah, oh, you know, I mean, I was about to say that. Like, I play dominoes on Wii U. Like, well, what, I've, what, seen, I've seen. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but there, there are uh, at least indie games like that in the works um, where you use cards and stuff to uh, oh, combat God. and stuff. I can't remember the name of the one I recently saw. I want to say I saw it on uh, the Nintendo Enthusiast videos, but I'm not sure. But you know I, I definitely thing? saw some. You know what's another thing is that you know the game Hearthstone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're supposedly thinking about putting it on consoles too, so it would be perfect for the Wii U for the fact that hello, you can just select the cards off of the gamepad and stuff, and there you go. But Nintendo has a current and popular card game that I don't know why they haven't put out a game for <laughs> in like over a decade. The and that's the, no, the Pokemon card Pokemon game. Pokemon card game. Yeah. Oh yeah, Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That would be nice. I was going to say, there were two GameCube games that could have received that treatment pretty well, and that, and that was the Kaito series, and also, I don't know if you guys remember on GameCube kind of early, um, Lost Kingdoms? Yeah, Lost, Lost Kingdoms yeah, yeah, Lost 1 King- and 2. Mm. Yeah. Lost Kingdoms you know, 1 and 2, I remember those. Those could have worked really well, so. And and there was also PSO 3, so. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, all of these options are really great, but I really, really, really wanted to be freaking Yu-Gi-Oh, because think about it. <laughs> Online and you know you just unleashing the beast. Kaiba, <laughs> like, oh, okay, come on. I'll just be settled, Kaiba, man. It's just you know <laughs> angry even perfect. when he's not angry. <laughs> is Yu-Gi-Oh still a thing? Is it still popular? Actually, yes. If actually, I'm gonna say this right now. Yes, it is. Because oh, I have I have people in my calf that still play it whenever I'm in lunch. So mm. it, yeah. This is what I don't understand. Why hasn't nobody gotten on this, right? Okay, so you have a system with an NFC chip built in. It's also Bluetooth. And you can also do video chat on it. Why exactly. aren't there massive like video hangout sessions and you could play Yu-Gi-Oh! And if the Yu-Gi-Oh! card has an NFC chip built in, you place the card nearby the, the gamepad, it shows it shows the card on the screen. Oh and you guys can, you, you could mm-hmm. you could basically play a game that way and you see that, video chat so you exactly. can see the reaction of the That's players. brilliant. That is a brilliant idea. Well, well, that's all Nintendo is not working on that. They missed the ball for sure. I, I, I'm not understanding this because I'm just blow Joe consumer, right? I'm just, I'm just, hey, little, little consumer guy. Why there are people paid to come up with ideas for stuff like this, and nobody's done it yet. It just, it blows my mind. That's one of the best ideas I've ever heard. For you don't uh, understand. Yeah. That's why I just want to get out there already because of the fact that I have so many ideas in my head that are not used right now, sure. because you know they're not, they don't think it's gonna work, but I know it's gonna work. Okay. Hello. They're making me want to learn how to program again. They're making me want to do <laughs> like low level C plus plus. I really don't want to get out there like that. I really don't because that's not my hobby. I don't. I, I would rather do the art side than the programming side. But I, nobody's doing it. Well, you mm. and uh, games to hook up, and uh, I'll back you, fools. <laughs> <laughs> Venture capital. <laughs> sure. I would like to see a combination of that with visual novel. That will work. Also, that'll be nice. That would be nice. As far as the storyline, work it as on a visual novel tangent, and then the, for the gaming portions of it, you sit up here and handle it as a card game. Mm-hmm. And then it can increase the odds of getting certain flags, you know, inside the um inside the game, you know, triggered. As far as on the social aspect that you have, you know, within the game when you try to associate with the characters, etc., and whatnot, Seto Kaiba, whoever else. I I haven't watched Yu-Gi-Oh in a long time, so I know that there's mm. been several iterations past it by now, with uh, you know, Yami and Yugi and all that. But and they suck. That's just that's such a great idea because, obviously, I mean, the the game itself, I mean, could be easily put together by a. a, a uh, a couple of people, an uh, indie studio, could put something together like that with a fifty thousand dollar budget. Let's just say and make you know, millions. And, and make yeah, because even though it's a niche market, 
it is a huge niche market, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what, that that's play what, those games. That's another excuse to buy every series of cars all over again just because they have the NFC chip. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, about, is, yeah. what about a clip? Because you got to realize that this is my wheelhouse. I have played collectible card games since I was 15 years old. I played Magic at um, at one of the top Magic places in the world, which is Star City Games. Back when it was Star City Comics, I played at the freaking counter with the guy who runs the place and signs his name to the big ass checks. All right, so I'm just giving you my, my credentials there. But anyway, there there needs to be a collectible card game for video games with an NFC sort of functionality that not only can you play it in game against other people, but you can take those same cards and play them in the physical world too. And you know what would be better, though? It's the fact that since the other consoles can't really do NFC, hello, this is a perfect chance. Mm-hmm. Like, it literally exactly. is, because you can do this nowhere else, because the other consoles do not have NFC. They would need a peripheral in order to do it. Uh huh. That's yeah. the only way you're going to have to do it. So basically, Nintendo should just start coming out with a card game and basically say, look, we have a card game. We use NFC technology that's built in to the controller, which you do not have to pay extra for. And our competitors not do this either, for the fact that um, they don't have an NFC. They Nintendo, can't do it. Mm. Nintendo could even lead into it like they're doing now with the with the characters, right? Since Skylanders mm-hmm. didn't want to do it, makes no sense to me. But since Skylanders and Disney Infinity didn't want to do it, Nintendo's making their own NFC figures, right? Yep. So you figured they would do the same thing. They could do Pokemon cards since they do their own series of cards. Do Pokemon cards and have the Pokemon card battle game, just like we were talking about before. And you you place the NFC, you place the card there with the NFC chip. The gamepad recognizes it, starts a video chat, and you can start a session and you can battle whoever you want. It can be televised, streamed, whatever, be on Twitch or what have you. And that that'll be the new game. And yeah. people will go and buy these cards because they want to play this game. So right. you can, you double you double your you double your investment. You get all your money back because you get it on the merchandise side as well as the video game side. It, it is a little greater. And you want to know something else is that you know how the 3DS is also getting an NFC kind of peripheral, uh, right? So basically, they can make it where you can use it cross, you know, cross system. Yeah, cr- so, cross game. Um, that, and you can also put it um, cross game, you know, cross gameplay. So you could be playing somebody on the 3DS while you're on the Wii U, oh, man. or something like that, because you know both of them have the NFC thing. So it's just like it could definitely work. It it just it's right there is just a money grab. Well, it's already been proven that uh, both the console and the handheld can communicate with each other. Because look at uh, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Yep, mm-hmm. that's a that's a no brainer right there. They can easily pull this off. They both have NFC. They both have two screens, and they both have cameras. I mean, really? I mean, <laughs> come on. And the aspect ratio of the of the screens are around the same. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could build the game for even the 3DS, even, and you know, have the uh, you know uh, upscale version for Wii U, and uh, have it, you know. Cross, you know, like cross game, like you said, that would be uh, that'd be pretty awesome. I don't know how we rolled into that from E3 list, but that, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's just how we that's do. That's, that's how we the do. Best rat hole I've been in in a while. <laughs> that's just how we do. You know how it ends up. <laughs> you know, it'll be awesome actually too, because mm-hmm. you know, of course, we can also have the video, uh, the camera on the gamepad too, right? Mm-hmm. So literally, we could have it where if the game could do live. Uh, Twitch, you know, live um, tourneys and stuff. So literally, you could have um, because you know how many uh, people on Twitch use, like let's say, um, for right now for Hearthstone, there's things like tourneys and stuff on uh, Twitch, mm-hmm. and literally they use it to where they, you know, they have both of the guys' cameras' faces on there, and you know while they have the gameplay showing. So it could literally just work out if they could have um, a live. Turny kind of thing on the game. Yeah, yeah. And, and not even just the NFC thing. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, the gamepad obviously has uh, it has limited, but it has some uh, face recognition technology in it because yep. obviously you can make you you know you can make your, your me's automated just by you know taking a picture of your face. You know, obviously it's not perfect. It's me. It's not you know it doesn't do your face paper, but it, maybe it, it can recognize the cards even not just you know using the NFC, but you know, just by the camera recognizing the card that you're playing. Uh, that's another thing that to add to the gameplay. So Yep. Wow, that's a nice that was a nice deviation now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean they the thing is if they do this, they and right now, since they are finally doing things with NFC, 
they come up with this idea or somehow in the God's name, we don't know how, if they see this video and get that. Oh my God! I'm the first one to buy. Please, please do take it. I mean, yeah. Nintendo, if you're listening, <laughs> you take and, it. And, and, we don't need any royalties. <laughs> well, uh, and, literally, and literally, if you guys will come out with a Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't care. Make a thing that I could use the gamepad, have it laying down on like a dual disc, please. Oh, I like it. <laughs> well, uh, let, me, let me let me let me contribute to uh, off script and you know territory here for a bit. We were talking about cameras. We were talking about cards and. An idea popped into my head: poker. Right? Oh, oh my god! Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way, using the camera and the gamepad, you can see a person's face, and if they have a tell, you'll be able to see it, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. It's just a quick idea popped into my head. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure they can. No, that good. sounds like a good idea. Believe yeah. it or not, though. That's, that's awesome. That and yeah. that for that and liars dice. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. and liars dice. Mm-hmm. Sounds like good. Th yeah. Can you imagine uh, NFC liars dice? That could work. Mm. That could work. Yeah, it could. All right, Nintendo, if you're listening, uh, make it happen or else. <laughs> you, see, you see, all of this is free. You don't have to you pay don't... us. This is free. You, you pay thousands of dollars to people to think tank and think of ways to make you money. This is free. <laughs> yep. All righty. So then, uh, <laughs> now that we kind of departed a long ways from the whole E3 thing, let's get back on to the E3, uh, uh, to the whole E3 reveals, the quote-unquote reveals again. <laughs> okay, so overall, how much credibility do you guys think those lists have? Um, the one with the whole Metroid U thing and the Pokemon we, we all right, I'm not gonna say it. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I call that BS, definitely. Yeah, that one definitely seems like BS to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot of high hopes and you know, uh, not much else coming off with that. But like I, I was looking at one on Player Essence site, and that one seems a bit more credible to me of a list than the other lists that I've seen so far. Have you seen it? Uh, let me see. It says Super Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Bayonetta 2, Shin Megami Tensei Crossfire Emblem, X from Monolith Soft, third-party lineup, various. Let me see. Uh, Wii U Virtual Console GameCube lineup. The only thing I call BS on that list would be Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah. Analog triggers much. Uh, let me see. Hyrule Warriors... Mario Party U, Yarn Yoshi, Metroid 3DS, Pokémon Fighters, which there's a trademark for that. So that's really likely. Star Fox U, that's <laughs> me hoping, and New Zelda U. It's pretty solid. It Sarah. seems like it seems like a more the more credible list made it to the player essence side of things. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm hoping I'm hoping that a good portion of those things turn out to be true. But hey. You know they say hope springs eternal. <laughs> I would just have to say, let's just wait until E3. Let's wait until everything. Once E3 comes, everything's just wiped off all the shoulders. So, you know, just like it's nice to see these lists. Star, Star yeah. Fox better be happy. <laughs> 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 I got to have that Star Fox. I mean, that's. Uh, I, I had a feeling, uh, you know, before you know the the release, uh, that we would see a Star Fox or remnants of a Star Fox. Um, I just think the gamepad is the perfect, you know, controller for Star Fox. Mm. Uh, well, Nintendo so, has been trolling about barrel rolls. Exactly, yeah. the, the barrel roll trolling with that, and you know, I just in the uh, even the uh, Kamiya, you know, talking about how he'd love to work on Star Fox. I just mm. think that's all part of you know us getting a Star Fox for Wii. So. Can you imagine Camille working on a Star Fox cussing out fans on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, this is not going to your freaking console already. <laughs> we, want, we, want, we want Wonder Red and Star Fox. Yeah, you, you, forgot his favorite line. you forgot his favorite line, Camille's favorite line, go tell your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I will I will say there's another list. Um, I, it's it's an anti Nintendo list, but uh, mm -hmm. it is it's uh the list that they have here is actually for the Microsoft conference, and the first thing they have listed there is Beyond Good and Evil Two. Um, oh, oh my God! I know that's fake. 
Okay, let me tell you something. If that were to happen, that would make me buy a Xbox One. Yeah, I, it's odd. If if it was exclusive, that would that would definitely oh, yeah. be oh, yeah. buying. Yeah, um, I do get it. So on that side, you have Beyond Good and Evil Two, um, Forza Horizon, um, two. So you know, basically, because didn't nobody like the the last Forza, so they're going back to the Horizon side of things. Um, obviously, Gears of War, Halo Five, um. Call of Duty. Call of Duty always shows up on the Xbox one. And um they probably they probably do something for that Star Wars Battlefront thing that they were talking about. Um but the thing that has me kinda in- intrigued is there's this there's this rumor that, that uh that for the first time in a very long time, um Rockstar is gonna unveil the game at E three. So, it, yeah, and it's supposed to be next gen. So we'll see exactly what that is. Um, and then, red you know, mm. so I mean, it might be another Red, red Dead Redemption. It might be another uh, Agent. I mean, who, it might be another uh, Bully. Who knows? Oh shit! Oh, oh, it's a Bully game. I'm gonna be so happy. I mean, or, or, bully. or it's a Grand Theft Auto Five port. I, uh, <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> if they if they showed up on a Nintendo Direct. Dude, Oh, <laughs> it's a wrap. You see, you see, Jimmy, why you had to go do that, man? And people were hopeful. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm gonna tell you gonna something right now. I, I want to see a sequel to Bully. Yeah, that I would be nice. I remember yeah. playing that on PS2. It was fun. <laughs> I, I I like Bully and Red Dead. So I mean, you know, it, I actually like State of Emergency. They should do another one of those. Oh, State of Emergency oh. was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty fun. So um, I you got you. So the other thing on there is is the obvious thing, God of War four, right? I mean that's pretty much been announced basically. Mm. So there, Sony's probably going to show that at some point, and probably another uh, sequel to Killzone. Mm. So can that, you be hyped for God of War four after Ascensions and the the fact that uh, a lot of people are gone now? I I can't when I realized that God of War three was was kind of short. Like it yeah. wasn't it was it wasn't the epic that I thought it was going to be. I played the you know the demo and stuff, and the demo had you really hyped, and you played the game, and it's like mm. really like can I can I get God of War two back? Can I? You know, <laughs> let's put it this way. With me. Let's put it this way. People are leaving and all of that, all that other stuff, external stuff. But let's talk about the internal. Let's talk about God of War itself, the game. The story would make no sense. We already yeah. pre- we already yeah. had a prequel. We right. already have the three original games. Dude done killed himself and all the gods. So who's gonna go kill Thor? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gonna have to follow portable line like before everything happened. The thing okay. is, I have a I, me and my, I spoke with a couple of friends about this about God of War, and the thing is, I'm thinking like they would go with another character because mm-hmm. we all know what happened in the end of God of War three. Um, right. So basically, I would I would understand. And there's like what 20 more gods out there, so yeah, yeah. But he kills like half of them before that story starts. Yeah. So it, it, in the Vita games, he he slays like he imprisons one god and he kills like freaking six of them, and that's before he even became like powerful Kratos. And here's the thing, uh, games. Yeah. Um, all for the idea of a new character again would make a lot more sense than Kratos again, but. Kratos was a very iconic dude. His anger was iconic. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. He had somebody he as right pissed there. off as that dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would be hard to match him. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I got you. You know, it's worth a shot. Yeah. Hmm. I, I don't. I don't really see anything. I don't foresee anything actually mind blowing. Um, showing up from from the other two, other than the. The, the demos we've we've already seen of, of stuff like okay let's find another demo engine for Unreal Engine 4 let's find another oh, demo Lord. engine for you know for for Crytek things that aren't possible on Wii U apparently because it'll just show <laughs> up and say it's for the Xbox One and then they'll immediately say it's not possible on Wii U for no reason whatsoever. Even um, the Sonic Boom required a modified Crytek engine. Exactly. That's the even thing, more superior. Things like that'll happen. I mean, they, they, these systems, these other two systems, are built on hype and hype alone, and people that claim to be on tech but don't understand it. Mm-hmm. So they're like, "Hey, I want the high end thing now. Let me not complain about this system not having Bluetooth." You know, <laughs> stuff. You know, stuff like that. Like, I don't. You know, I, I, I really don't understand why somebody can sit here and talk about 
all these all these high end things this system is doing, and then you ask them exactly how that works, and they don't know. So, but but that's what that's the that's the audience that these people cater to. So we have to show next gen engine. We have to explain to them why it's next gen, even though it may actually be doing something technically weaker than what was done in seventh generation. But you know, I mean, you're you're dealing with you're dealing with tablet CPUs, and how do you harness what's left of what they're doing to make <laughs> to make the games run good, or how to make the I guess the the next gen experience, if you will, make you know the game play better. You know what's funny? People are still like, "Oh, eight gigs of RAM, bro, eight gigs of RAM." Yeah, that's not a game. Just saying, <laughs> but you know, oh, I, I really Lord. don't know. Like, like especially I I don't know. I just feel so. Like, I'm feeling bad for Sony. Like, I really am because of the fact that, like, I don't want... Because for real, it's just, like, I don't know what they're going to show. Because, really, Santa, we already know the Order 1888. We already know... Um, we already know the... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Uncharted 4. So mm-hmm. it's just, like, what else can they show? And then that one rumored game, supposedly, that's, like, supposed to be, like, a Dark Souls type of game. Mm. So, you know, I don't know what they're going to show, literally. It's just... Like all of this is gonna be third party. What what happened to Capcom's game? Are they gonna show that again? They might do that. Oh, deep down, that I yeah. thought that game was supposed to like come out already. Yeah, I think it, it it may be on its way to being canceled. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, there's there's another Street Fighter, so they could show that. An, <laughs> a Ultra Street Fighter, Ultra Street Fighter Four Ultimate Turbo Super mm, Extra. We can't, Kamea, count, Kamea. we can't count the Five Edition. <laughs> your pants edition. There you go, just in your pants edition. Yeah. Oh, so, Capcom for the win. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's so sad because I, I still buy them. <laughs> like, ooh, oh, there's an adjustment in this character. I must try it. Wait a minute, what if they actually release a new Mega Man? That would be nice. You don't know uh, how much I'm going to scream? I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> I'm going to scream of happiness. <laughs> I'm just saying. James, what did you just say? You'd scream of happiness. And, and yes. They might, they might do it from, from pressure, just because the the indie game is it got funded. Mm-hmm. That, that that announcement makes you happy, right, games? Yes. One more time, happy, right? Yes, really. Capcom really. doesn't know the meaning of the word happy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone in there. Well, they were happy when they opened their new mobile studio after sitting and cashing in the money from Monster Hunter. <laughs> no, what what happened is, with that? This is one of the were. This is one of the other lists I was looking at, and this is one of the really fake ones. But one of the things that kind of really let me know it was fake, because on, on the Nintendo part of the list there, it said uh, Symphony of the Night 2 was coming out for the 3DS. Oh, lies. So <laughs> I was oh, like, oh, God. That, that, was the only thing I, uh, that was the only thing I saw. I looked at it, I was like, oh, God, no, that's, that's wrong. That's not, gonna it's not, it's not happening. So, um, but one of, them, one of them was actually acknowledged by the E3 uh, party. Um, saying that you know, hey, this this list isn't up to date. So basically, it was leaked, and mm-hmm. it, it just wasn't accurate for the time frame because it was received in the past, and somebody finally took a picture of it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I I don't know which one of those three it is because there's like you know there's a lot of them floating around, but I mean, so far a lot of them are believable, but some of them are really reaching. That Symphony of the Night too. Do, I mean, as much as I would wish for that to happen, it's not going to happen. Mm-mm. I mean, since we're on this, like, what would it take from each uh, hardware manufacturer to make you... Uh, uh, what would it take seeing games-wise from them to make you buy one if you haven't bought one already? I think, games, you already got a PS4, right? Yeah, I just say I have everything, so... Oh, you, got, you got everything, okay. So, like... For us fools who, who who's still on the fence, like for me, I'm looking at it. I'm like, um, Microsoft has has the most potential to get me to buy their console because um, they've shown me a lot more games that would kind of get me more interested, and they have they have rare, so they <laughs> they have that rare IP held hostage, you know, held hostage. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's the potential. You know that I'll I'll get a Jet Force Gemini or something. And, you know? and Microsoft has been trolling. Oh my yeah. God, they've yes. been trolling. They're like, right. hey, we have them. We're gonna do this Connect Sports game. We, yeah. <laughs> they've no, been trolling. I, I just but gotta I'm insert Sony, and I'm like, um, I don't. I, there's nothing like the order doesn't do it for me. Um, even like I, I like the Uncharted series. I have all three, um, but I'm not really excited for another one. You know, so I don't know. You know what would it take for me? To, like, 
you know, at least, especially this year, get a PS4. Mm. Yeah. Um. There, until the games come out, dude. I mean, there is going to be. They're going to basically like we predicted. You know, on, on, from the very first gamers at large, these two systems are having the exact same problem that Wii U had its first year, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to happen because console launches suck. Mm-hmm. So it's going to take a year or two for them to develop. You know, all these games that they're probably going to show at E3, we probably won't see till 2015 or 2016 anyway. So. It may be, it may be this Christmas or next Christmas with the freaking holiday bundle for you to get any of these systems. Now, for me, I'm the, you know, the, how can you say it, the, 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 the hip pocket that gone must have it day one purchaser. So, for me, it was just the promise of Halo Five, the promise of Halo Five, and I'm not even really, I'm kind of worn out after, after, uh, after Reach. But in in four, which was basically Metroid, but I, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of torn right now. I I feel like I really bought that system just for Killer Instinct. I, mm. I, I'm really starting to feel that way now. Um, now as far as the PS4, it's gonna ha- it, it's gonna have first party titles that I'm gonna want to play. It, mm. I, I mean, Infamous is one of them, and, and the rest are gonna come as they go. So. I mean, uh, other than Rezo Gun right now, there's nothing really for me me to play on it other than whatever on, on whatever stuff that's on PSN. So, um, free games on PSN and, and things of that nature. But for uh, me, it might end up being a race on who gets Beyond Good and um, Beyond Good and Evil Two first. Yeah, that might be a big one. Mm-hmm. Beyond Good and Evil. What, what about uh, is Metal Gear really? A, well, it's, it's coming to both probably. I, I would imagine. I don't yeah, think it's, it's going to be. Both. But Metal Gear is. Metal Gear and Metal Gear comes out nearly every year, so I was like, nah, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's bit, you know, it's okay, it's all right, but Beyond Good and Evil, I've been waiting for a sequel for God knows how long for that game. So uh, yeah. You, you mentioned Metal Gear, man. What are you talking about? They already yeah. have Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the demo. <laughs> yeah, the the demo everybody paid for. Um, <laughs> so I I'll tell you this, like, okay, so looking at both of these two systems, right? Um, do you think Sony's going to resurge again and start finally getting back its its advantage of uh, Japanese RPGs? Because it started to get them towards the end of the PS3's life, but it was kind of hurting at the beginning when when the Wii had more than mm-hmm. than any any system. And I'm, I want to say at one point in time the 360 did because you had Lost Odyssey and um, the other what's the other one that looked like Dragon Ball because it was from the same artist. I can't think of the name of it right now. Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon. I think. It was. Um, yeah, you had a couple of RPGs coming like right out of the gate uh, for the 360. I want to say between between 2006 and 2008, it was it was like JRPG after JRPG, and then they started coming after that. Well, after the Tales games start coming over and stuff. So, I, I do you see anybody see the PlayStation 4 getting that advantage back? Because that was a big advantage during the PS1. I see them PS2 trying days. to. I see them trying to. Okay. I see them yeah. making a concerted effort to get that back because Lord knows they want to have that niche market right there. And probably in Japan they'll go visual novel. Well, I'm, I'm know, calling it right here and now. They're going to go visual novel a lot in Japan. You, you already said it, um, Fox. Um, history will repeat itself. It will pick up towards the end of the generation just as it did last time. And that's, that, 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 that was actually the reason for my regret never getting a PS3 because early on I, could, I just didn't care. And towards the end, I realized I made that mistake, a mistake I'm not going to repeat. So if you ask me when I'm going to get these two consoles, what's going to make me buy these two consoles, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yeah. And right now, PS4 hasn't gotten to its time yet. Um, being a huge Halo guy, I see the Xbox One being in my household first, especially with these uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 rumors. I see that happening first, but it's just a matter of time because I'm not willing to sacrifice all of the uh, exclusives that the PS4 may have, especially if it's in the same vein as what the PS3 did towards the end of its life cycle. So. Now, Zen, you already saw the announcement of the Halo uh, like anthology edition for Xbox One, didn't you? Yes, and I squealed yeah. happily, but um, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a nice little medicine after the bittersweet news that Guardians would not be out this year, so... Yeah, the the only reason why that see that why that even remotely is positive to me is because it means I could play Halo 2 online again. That's the only reason why. Because right. I, I I don't I don't know if any did anybody watch the YouTube video of the two guys that kept the Halo 2 game going for like a week. Um, <laughs> no, but I heard of it. 
they kept it going for like a week after uh, after Xbox Live was turned off because they realized that they couldn't really kill the connection until everybody had stopped serving games. So they kept the game, they kept the online game going for over a week. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and, and they were the very last two people playing online on Halo 2. It, it was like a, the world's longest record or some crap. So longest game session. It was over over a hundred plus a hundred plus uh, hours or so of them going in one game. So I, yeah. I actually feel like uh, Sony, uh, as far as the niche games, the J- JRPGs. I don't. I don't think it'll be in the end of this console's life cycle. I think uh, it started at the end of the PS3 and it's going to continue uh, earlier in the PS4 because I feel like they have to have those games because they're not going to be spending the money. They're, they're not going to be going the budgets, the big budgets, as they did in the past because they, they just simply can't afford it. There was a time when you know they were worth over a hundred million dollars as a company, and they could afford to take those losses and try to and try to you know uh, rub shoulders with Microsoft, but they can't afford to do that anymore. And that's why I think they embraced uh, uh, the indie crowd, uh, the indie game makers, uh, so well because they need those stopgap games. I think this is going to continue on. I think they're going to. I think we will see the JRPGs earlier on, and that'll make me that'll make me jump ship. Uh, not jump ship. That'll that'll make me join the ship of the PS4 a little earlier. I think um, that's just you know that's that's what I think. I think that's what they're headed for. Hmm. Yeah, I think they're going to get there too. Uh, it's to me, I don't I don't really see the efforts of them bringing these guys over there, other than the whole Kingdom Hearts thing. I don't really see them making the mass effort to yeah. to court these guys. It seems it seems like more. It seems like Nintendo's doing it more than anybody else, really, on the Japanese front. Every it, it seems like Sony Sony is still trying to chase Microsoft and get all these American developers. Um, it's gonna be harder I, for. Um, I would say it would be harder for for Sony to get, um, especially RPGs now from Square Enix, because you know they basically sold all their things, and now like you can see Square Enix is also going towards the Xbox One. So, yeah, I, I really think the first the first RPG on 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 Sony platform is going to be a Western RPG. Yeah. Um, and, and I hate to say that, but yeah, it, it's going to be. And that's a Japanese console. You would figure that that wouldn't be the it's, case, but it's more like an American console to me now because of the fact that they're just going after what you know people in America want. Because right now in Japan, they hate it. Yeah, there's nothing to play. Yeah, they they don't like. Uh, Call of Duty. They don't like, you know, all this stuff. On the whole front of, you know, Sony playing Microsoft's game, I've just got to say one thing. You can't be monthly paid and pretend that you're going to be outbidding Bruce Wayne at your local bar. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. You can't play their game. I mean, it's Richie Rich versus, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's Richie Rich versus, uh, what's his name? We Saw Broke. <laughs> yeah, <we saw> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. I think Sony was at their best when they were competing for the Nintendo fan. They were competing, uh, you know, uh, for the Japanese market. You know, I feel like the, the, like I said before, um, I, the reason I even bought a PS One was because of you know Crash Bandicoots and uh, 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 what's the uh, Dragon. Uh, Spyro's and things like that. That's what brought me over in Odd World even. Those were the games that brought me over. And I stayed for other games, obviously. It wasn't just you know, I didn't buy just for that, but I and I and I acquired, you know, the siphon filters and things like that once I got over there. But that's what, you know, brought me over to Sony. And and the, and the, obviously the the Final Fantasies and stuff like that. And so, you know, I understand that the market has changed, uh, the the American uh, the first person, third person action shooters and whatnot is dominating now. Uh, it's not platformers anymore as much. It's not RPGs uh, as much anymore. But the market is still big enough it, it, where you can differentiate yourself from the guys who are only doing who consoles only seem to be the shooter console. And you can differentiate yourself by you know catering to that niche crowd. And you can still have that other stuff as well, but you could be you could be the RPG console. You could be the you know, you know, that's the thing you can you know lay your hat on and stop trying to chase that expensive ass market that you can't afford to be in. Yeah, I, I think these two are really missing out, and I, I really think all the jokes 
about uh about Wii U being another Dreamcast are probably accurate, but not in the way that they're thinking. Right. Right. I, it, it's going to be another Dreamcast because it means that basically Sony's going to treat uh, Sega's going to treat that like their system. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it, it looks like it's becoming that way. Right. So and, I was going to say, and where Sega games didn't sell, Nintendo games are going to sell. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, and, Se- and Sega games sold on Nintendo hardware a lot better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with them investing in customizing an engine mm-hmm. for that system, they're not going to just use it for one game. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, even you know, great games like Shenmue didn't sell very well. They put a lot of money into it. If Nintendo made a Shenmue, it's gonna move copies. <laughs> oh yeah. If, if, if I'm just saying, if they made that type of game where they invested that kind of money into it, it's gonna move. So. That's that's the difference. Uh, you could say yeah, you could say we use the next Dreamcast, but it's the Nintendo Dreamcast. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so it's gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah. So Sega's Sega's not getting back back into hardware unless it's with their old rival. To be honest with you, I don't I don't I don't see a way from them back in. Um, it, it, I'm surprised EA hasn't come out with something already. Okay, now that you guys said that Sega has a new Dreamcast in the Wii U, where's my uh, copy of Seaman 2 already? <laughs> hey, I just want Fantasy Star Online too. I, I mean, all they gotta do is port that over. It's already on PC. Just bring it over. <laughs> I mean, there's so many inventive ass games that were on Dreamcast that will be right at home on Wii U, right at home. And Seaman is, is definitely my first pick. Give me House of the Dead. Give me another Crazy Taxi. I'm 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 with it. <laughs> crazy Taxi. Yeah. Give us that peripheral that you can slap your Wii U controller down onto a, 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 a what was it, a, a handgun shell yeah. or whatever, oh, or, a, or a rifle House shell. Of House of the Dead all day. Oh, come on, man. Virtual cop. <laughs> Virtual cop all day. Hmm. That's well, I'm exactly just, what it's I'm for. just telling you, Nintendo, man, Sega, they they need to sit up here, join forces, and just say, screw it. Go balls to the wall all out. And they're the right across the street from each other. It's hilarious. <laughs> like, like, literally, right across the street. <laughs> literally across the street from each other. <laughs> Basically, it, it, they could use SneakerNet to transfer files. Yeah, they, it's, they, it's, they it's like Apple and Microsoft. It's like oh. Apple and Microsoft. They're literally, they could throw rocks at each other. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> hey, bring new meaning into pitching an idea. Yeah, they, they got to they do something. But I, I, This E3... The, the only excitement probably is, is going to come from third party, probably Ubisoft or, uh, or or Nintendo. I don't really see I don't see Microsoft making any waves. They're just gonna they're gonna pump out more. They're gonna do what they're supposed to do. They're gonna show games for their system, which is what probably what they should be doing. A uh, quick question: uh, Take Two was saying something about Nintendo being a partner. Since when? <laughs> since um, since they or, or they or, or they plan on dropping something new? But NBA 2K13, I think Don't on count. Wii U, that was the last, that was the last game I think they published on Nintendo hardware. Oh man, and, Space, Space Station Silicon Valley was an awesome game. Was this? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh I man, Space Station Silicon Valley. Well, what take to what they did? They did Smuggler's Run on the GameCube. They refused to port uh port uh, Grand Theft Auto to it. Then they put Grand Theft Auto on the GBA. Um. <laughs> they haven't really done anything since. Well, no, they did Manhunt on the Wii, Manhunt Two on the Wii, Bully on the Wii, and uh, did they publish those the, games? The tennis game that they eventually put in Grand Theft Auto Five. So Rockstar, all, Rockstar Tennis. Yeah, they the, Take Two, Take Two published those games for Rockstar. Hmm. <laughs> Rockstar is not gonna spend all their money on Nintendo hardware. Come on, man. They they they, they, they gotta get a publisher, and it's Take Two. So they, that's that's who who did. Rockstar it. still ass hurt over Body Harvest. I was gonna say they still butt hurt. Body <laughs> they, pro- they probably are. <laughs> it is what it is, man. You know. So and and a lot of people I think are that way. I think Epic was that way too at some point. They had a mm. deal where they were going to do Unreal Tournament after the whole Doom thing went out, but then they had to compete with id, and id had some kind of a long-term agreement because they were on a dream team with Nintendo. So mm. and I think they kind of, Epic has been kind of, they've been kind of butthurting along that way too since the N64. So uh, I came out of Epic on, on the N64. Or not Epic, um, id on N64. Uh, was it uh, Daikatana? 
that trash. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the id released a lot of stuff. You had you had Doom 64, what was it Hex and Heretic? Yeah. Um, yeah. almost every PC game they had, there was an N64 port. Mm-hmm. So I, they true. they were really there. So it's just. It's just sad to see that you know something like that caused a competitor, quote unquote, to turn to you know to have such a long-standing feud because they work these deals like this every day between Sony and Microsoft and nobody seems to get mad about that. Mm-hmm. So you know I, I don't understand why you know these guys can throw money around one way or the other, be be friends with these guys one day and then the next day go to their competitor and, and be friends with them. And there's not a long-standing feud, but when it comes to Nintendo, people like roll their eyes, and you got people got all kind of co- comments in a live daggone conference that's being televised and streamed. But they just don't care. It's like, hey, I'm an EA, I'm part of an EA employee, and I'm like, you really expect to make money on Nintendo's hardware? Like, how do you say something like that? Like, that's what I don't get. It's like, I, you can have your gripes or whatever, but to 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 go out in public and 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 because you never know what's gonna happen. Exactly. You know, Sony and Microsoft might die tomorrow, and when you're stuck with Nintendo. Then what? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, I mean, so you can, you should never. Um, that's one thing I know about. You know, I learned about business is that it's, it's no, no matter how bad the deals go, you never bad mouth your um, your partners. You Be never nice to everybody. You, you don't burn you your bridges. When, right. You never burn those bridges because you never know when you know you might need to cross them again. So you know, I just that's what just kills me about it. That they just. They they just don't care about repercussions, you know. They don't care. And that that's starting that's starting to really let me understand that the people that that fanboys from that are our age have have not grown up, but they've they've made their way into the industry, so, and their personal bias is affecting their business. Yep. And it's it's really sad because I mean, at the end of the day, man, you got to make a buck, you know. And right. if you know that you can make money. On, on this hardware with very little, very little daggone capital. I mean, like we, you could really make a game. You could really make a game for a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars on week, and it'd be guaranteed to get millions back. That made it made no sense for not everybody to jump on it. La- last generation. I don't know about now. It might be a little bit different now, but but last generation, like you, you didn't have to spend that much money to put a game on it. So why wouldn't when you look at the competition, you know, and you got to spend sixty mil, you know, just to get a game that's going to be notable enough to get the attention, when you could release on Wii, not even get the entire market share, but because it's a hundred million freaking consoles out there, you still sell a million copies and get all your money back and then some. Why wouldn't you even? You know what I'm saying? That just was really stupid to me, last generation. Mm. So it, obviously it was some kind of bias there. Yes, there was a little power, or whatever difference or what have you. But I mean, these people have developed for GameCube and Xbox before. It's not that difficult. That, right. That's that's what kills me is that they act like, you know, this is completely alien hardware. <laughs> and you, and, 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 to me, it would it was it would seem like. Uh, the you know the uh, the less proficient the hardware is, the easier it will be for you to work with it because exactly. you don't have to you know try to do all these you know I'm not and I'm not I'm not the most you know hardware tech guy, but it, it, you know just from common sense standpoint, it would seem like the 3ds is a no brainer. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. it's like it's it's very cheap to make games for, and it's it's got a great install base. Why are these are, why are these third parties all over the thing? Ass herdery. I mean, yeah. that just doesn't make any sense. If the game, cre- if the GameCube didn't improve, anti Nintendo buys the 3DS surely does. And it's it's not a mystery either because the 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 hardware the hardware in the 3DS is very well documented. It uses it uses a very common part. There's nothing customized about the 3DS on on the GPU side. We and we GameCube all the way up to Wii U are. You know, there's still stuff that people don't understand about their hardware. But 3DS, it uses a Pico 2000, dude. Go look it up. Everything that that thing is capable of, that 3DS is capable of. Go, uh, go get in there. Yeah. Go get in there and dig. So, I, I don't, I don't, I really don't understand why why it's such a mystery and why people can't leverage it and, and do what they need to do with it. So, um, go figure with that. 
quick question though, quick question, and no disrespect to anyone here, but uh, how do we go from E3 to griping about the third parties again? <laughs> oh, right. We did it again. Another rat hole. Another rat hole. Your fair, boys. That's <laughs> oh lord! I was gonna take us off on a totally different tangent in a minute. Let's, let's <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of crying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me let me give you something else to cry about then. <laughs> what do you guys think about the supposed deal that's going down between Google and Twitch? Mm. I hadn't mm. heard about this. Yeah. Uh, presumably, Twitch is going to be bought out by Google in the tune of a billion dollars. Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> Remember the last big buyout? Yeah. Didn't go so well. <laughs> exactly. Looks like it's happening again. Oh. But, you, but you know what, though, it makes all the sense in the world because all it is is Google Live. I mean, YouTube you know, Live. There's That's a part. It is. There's a part of me that is really, really sad that this is a reality. And there's another part of me that's kind of laughing because all those dudes that ran from YouTube to Twitch now have nowhere to go. Yep. <laughs> they shall remain nameless, by the way, but you will see them coming back like nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I got a list of them, too. They're all taking up my feed. And I, I imagine what's going to happen if Microsoft discontinues Skype. Oh, oh no. All the people that want to avoid this right here are going to be right on here. Right on oh, here. I, I, mean, yeah. I don't see what the big problem is. I'd rather use this than Skype anyway. Yeah, I, can, I can just imagine the dudes, man. It's like, well, okay, then the mosey back on over. <laughs> I know I nice vacation. Time to go home. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Google Plus, for, for me anyway, render Skype uh, irrelevant, <laughs> you know, because I. You know, as a uh, YouTube content creator, it's just so much easier to, to, to hop on Google Plus, you know, to do your mm -hmm. podcasting and all that stuff. So, I don't know. It makes it seamless in a way, as, as long as it works. <laughs> right, as long as it works, right, I was going to say. I'm staring at you, Google. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, though, I mean, you know, we can't even face cam out, you know, without having some problems on here, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. they, they're going to have to get on the ball. If they're buying Twitch, they're going to have to do something with it. Mm. Yeah, because that's, that's part that's part of the infrastructure right there. Twitch is all about that. So, and and it's for upstreaming gaming videos. So you know you could see the relevance to the conversation because you think about it. That's where uh, that's where Microsoft and Sony upload to to Twitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Imagine. how's that going to affect them? Imagine you you're uploading to Twitch and all of a sudden you get a content ID match. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow. lord, that that's gonna be funny. He's gonna be so much butt hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so much butt hurt. <laughs> oh man. Oh lord, but I, I I'm telling you right now though, that's that's the shame of it all. Maybe maybe what Google needs to do is come up with a difference between the content ID and that they do for you know video that's uploaded versus video that's streamed. And that's probably what it needs to be. It needs to be a separation between church and state. They need to have they need to have dedicated processing for exactly what you said in that order, for for uploads and for streaming, and have them separated instead of having a because they probably have it set up where they have server farms for everything, mm -hmm. and, and whatever's coming through they process it as they go and then it's sent out. So mm -hmm. if they have aggregate, if they have places where that are dedicated just for those two different functions, that'll probably streamline the process a lot better. Exactly. Well, all right. Does anybody else have a final topic for the evening? Uh, Actually, oh, shoot. Hmm. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've, got, I've got one, and it is, everybody should be able to participate. Okay. okay. Um, all, right, all, right. all right, go ahead, Tobias. It, it, it's the one that we should we should do every time. What, what have you guys been playing lately? <laughs> Believe it or not, Demperman, the series. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I've been playing Demperman. They came by wave, uh, and it's um, sequels. Interesting. Yeah. You ever tried Dempleman? I haven't. No. You should give it a shot, man. It's like what, ten bucks on the eShop? Ten bucks. That's it. Ten bucks. That's it. Ten bucks, and it's kind of like Pokemon. It's kind of like I, Pokemon meets uh, Dragon Warrior type dealing. I will have to fire up the Wii U and take a look. That's not the Wii U. It's 3DS. 3DS. Oh, 3DS. 3DS. Oh, never mind. Dempleman. Um, they came by wave. And the the way the game works is it basically uses uh, ambient Wi-Fi to basically randomly roll a certain amount of Dempermen that you can capture. So, like, the more uh, Wi-Fi you pass through, you know what I'm saying, uh, in your daily in-and-outs, 
the more likely you could find rarer and rarer um, gentlemen. Ah, got it. The so gentlemen like, they came by way of, got it. Yeah, uh, it's take a definitely look. well worth it. And then the um, the sequels are out for it. One, and, you know, the sequels out for it. Two and three are out. And you could transfer your gentleman from gentleman one to gentleman two, and your gentleman from gentleman two to gentleman three. Sweet. So yeah, you could start off with a full party, as long as you've played part one. So gentleman three, the rise of digital. Yes, sir. That the third one. Okay, got it. All right, I'll check that out. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun little time waster. I right, get on it. So, right. which, what you guys been playing as of late? Um, I've actually been playing Scram Kitty. Scram oh, Kitty yes. and Buddy on Rails. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's so good, but so... I know. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Dude, I can't get past. Oh, oh Lord. Oh. Uh, I've, um, I've been playing a lot of... I, or I, re I just beat Kirby Triple Deluxe yesterday. And oh. uh, I've put, like, over 30 hours into Mario Golf on 3DS. So... Mm. And then... Lots of other smaller things mixed in. I picked up Wonderful 101 again. I uh, been playing uh, Child of Light for the past few hours. You mm. know, just jumping back and forth. Uh, Child of Light, how is that? It's really good, actually. Awesome. Really good. Awesome. Recommend it. <laughs> Recommend it. it. it I, I'll put it this way: it is a JRPG made by Western developers. Mm. Perfect. Okay, then. If it's a convincing JRPG, sounds good. And yeah. it actually looks really like the art is really beautiful. Yeah, it really is. For some uh, reason, it reminds me of uh, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, the story. Yeah. Mm hmm And they rhyme and all the other kind of crap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that's the best part that they rhyme, man. It's like you got me doing it too. It's good. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm normally not a proponent uh, to be a, a engine whore per se, or, or or graphics whore for that type of thing. But that, that, yeah, the the UB engine, the UBR engine is 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 freaking awesome. So I, I for any for any games that are going to use that in the future, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to them because they did a real good job, Child of Light. Yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not really a graphics for type of thing. Is it your you like the art direction? You know? Exactly, because the way that it's laid out, like it, right. nobody's really done that before. Because I think prior to that, it was actually CPU intensive. Because the larger you had a sprite, the the more the more RAM it took up, or something like that. So I guess they built the engine around that to where they could do a lot of subroutines to make up for that flaw. So it, it it works pretty well. I like it. I, you see a lot of real big like art assets in the game. So oh wow, yeah, it's it's real nice. It, it looks like a painting almost. So so it's kind of Okami-ish, right? Well, I, I want to say it, it's kind of like two D. Uh, what was the closest thing I could think of? Do your did anybody play Miramasa or the, the the game before that? Um, what was the what was the PS2 game? What was the name of that game? Miramasa Demon Blade, right? Yeah, Miramasa Demon Blade. It, it, it's more. It, I want to say it's more akin to that, or or the game that came before it on PS2, and I can't think of the name of it right now to save my life. But um, but it's more to that where you have the you have the the the, the very large 2D sprites, but they're controlled by the game engine, so they rotate and things like that, and mm. they they help animate the character. So things like that are are happening in the game, but you, I mean, it's it's a it's a JRPG on top of that, so. You go on. You go on the battle, and you have you have two people in your party at a time, but you you have a, a larger party than two people, and you can rotate out in real time. So, uh, it, it's it's pretty nice, man. I, I I can't complain. I've I've had more and more fun the more I've played it. So, and I'm I'm enjoying leveling up, and the the level tree is multi-tiered, just like it is in in more complex RPGs. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to be if you want to be a tank, you can go this way. If you want to be a pure mage and cast nothing but magic, you can be this way. If you want to be DPS, you can go this way. Oh, so, cool. uh, yeah, it, it has all those different levels, but it doesn't really spell it out to you. You have to look at it and see. And once you see what some of the casting effects are and stuff like that, that lets you know which way you need to go. Okay. So, it, it's pretty nice, man. I, 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 it's definitely worth the price. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Well, um, at least it could accommodate different builds. Yeah, yeah. It's is so basically you, you could probably play that game differently. Probably the first seven times you play that game, you probably could play it differently. Cool. It's, what uh, are we talking about? Uh, 15, Child of Light. Twenty Child hours. Of Light. No, I know what game. I'm saying uh, we're talking about fifteen hours maybe of a uh, gameplay. Yeah. Uh, for ten dollars, I mean, come on. That's, That's not bad. A beautiful game. 
it's it's real it's real nice real nice I love it and you know it, it kind of helps that the lead character is actually a girl instead of a big hulking freaking <sighs> beast <laughs> oh <laughs> lord so that that kind that kind of works and I don't know it, the game just makes a lot of sense to me but uh yeah it's on everything too so you know uh, for everybody for any non Nintendo fan out there you can please get that game the more people to get that game the better. But it's doing very well in the eShop. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would imagine so. <laughs> Gamepad advantage much? Yeah, that and all those those burnt up um, Rayman haters. Actually, <laughs> they're like, "Hey, you stole our Rayman!" And they're like, "New Ubisoft game? Okay, I buy it." That's <laughs> exactly what happened. So, um, yeah. I, I while I'm talking, I guess I'll talk about what I've been playing. But I've been playing that in uh, Killer Instinct. And uh, yeah, off and on, Child of Light, Killer Instinct. Um, I'll be doing a couple more videos on Killer Instinct probably. Um, I have to get back into Rezo Gun. I haven't really turned on PS4 in a while. Um, mm. And actually, I think I got on the 360 game. I actually um, w- booted up uh, um, Saints Row the Third uh, yesterday, and and no, nah, that's. Man, I, if you've if you've listened to any podcasts or or any uh, game of the year awards for this game, I see why. It is a game. <laughs> it it I'm, when I say it's a game, it is a game. It is not trying to hide the fact that it is a game. It is a game, and it, it is fun. It is really fun. So I like I like bridge tossing in that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy who goes by the old age, the old age home and grabs people and just start tossing. <laughs> I know I ain't, I'm no good, but still. No, I, I, I man, I did it in in other games. What what game? What game was that I did it for at first? I think it was was it was it Crackdown? Yeah, I started doing it in Crackdown, and um, I actually did it in Disney Infinity too. So yeah, you can yeah just. But but in this one, whatever it's you want. funny to chuck for distance. Yeah, as far as you can, just go. <laughs> yeah, achievement a lot. <laughs> Get some old people going. Ah, ah. Yeah, <laughs> this game is sick. So, what you doing, Sunny? Sick game is sick. So, <laughs> for anybody that does not have it, it is it is free if you have Xbox Live Gold. So please download it, um, and support the publisher because that that's a pretty good game. Oh um, Lord, here's hoping for a part five. Yeah, it's to be even more stupid. Please be. <laughs> Make it as stupid as possible. The first game was like kind of semi-serious, and I didn't know where to go with it. And The it second was game was over-the-top hilarious, though. Yeah, just hilarious. And then they just balls to the wall in three. It's just like, screw everything. Let's just be stupid, extra stupid, superpowers, go. Everything is just <laughs> extra stupid. So, yeah, I, I really like this so far. So. Oh Lord! But I'm telling you something right now. That's what games need to get back to: mindless fun. Just yeah. mindless fun. They're Don't they're being it. too they're being way too serious now. I mean, like Order 1866. Like real. I mean, like uh, Gears of War in Victorian times. I don't uh, really. <laughs> I mean, the guns even work that well back then. I don't. I, I, think, I don't know I, what to make of that. I guess it's an alternate history. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know, it's a game, so. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine somebody shooting a musket back. Can you imagine the 1700s Call of Duty? Yeah. That, oh my God. Actually, oh my I, God. I'm good. I'm gonna call it probably. I know in the near future they're gonna create one like that where they put it in the Civil War and give them like nine, nine. Uh, oh shoot, ninety. Uh, the P90s. I would love to see that. All that. <laughs> and then at the end of the game, you get killed by Altair. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> I mean that's that's the only thing that would make sense to me. Well, I'm like, why are you playing this game? This makes no sense. Oh, you're in the ominous. So, yeah. that, that makes the most sense for me. So, um, yeah, uh, the, the other other thing that I was playing, um, Luigi's Mansion 2. Mm. Um, just just booted it up from my son's 2DS. I haven't really been playing um, 3DS oh. that much. So. So you like playing on a slice of toast? Yes, the slice of toast works well. <laughs> the, slice of, the slice of toast works well from from my my toaster, which is my PS4. I boot, I, I pop it out of my my PS4 every now and then. When it's nice and warm. I play my toast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's red toast too, so it's really hot. Oh my god, I hate when the thing gets warm. It's like it's like 
because it's right next to my Wii U, and then, like, I feel like, no, stop, you're melting it. Like, <laughs> go away. Oh, oh, my God. That thing's, like, that thing's good for winter, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, Lord. I already told you, you could use it as a space heater. Exactly. Oh, it's perfect. I, I, I will say it's one thing, though. Winter. It is interesting with the whole uh, the street pass thing. Uh, my son lights up every time he gets new me. So that that kind of I I'm, I'm kind of late to it, but I understand the craze now. So oh, yeah. it, the thing about the street pass though is uh, you get incentives for street pass in, in the games, like yeah. um, you know the that uh, series of games they released recently. Um, I can't remember the name, but it has like the the gardening game and it has the uh, space shooter and all that stuff. Uh, you get uh, you get um, you know uh, basically oh, the meat plaza games. Yeah, the meat plaza yeah. games. Right, the meat right. plaza games. You get hats. You get different yeah. outfits and all right. kind of stuff. So yeah, it's 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 nice. I like it. And you know, it, one it, thing it, I it, want, it, <laughs> yeah, one thing I want Nintendo to bring back is the gifting option. For mm. real. From the Wii. Yeah, from the Wii. Cause sometimes you know I I feel like you know cause um my friends got some nice uh got a Wii U you know everything. Got a 3DS, and I'm just like, what should I get him for the birthday and stuff? And yeah, I can't, because just like, mm. you know, so I'm just like, I, I wanted to bring back the, um, because usually they want things like that are on the Wii U eShop, and then I'm just like, dang it, I don't want to go outside and get a car, you know? I always wondered if anybody used that feature, because I saw it there, and I never really got a chance, I never really was in a scenario where I would use that, because mostly any games that, anybody that I knew that had a Wii probably wouldn't play the game that I would send them, so... I, I never really, I never really got a chance to to do anything like that. But that's that's an interesting. It's interesting that you that you actually used it previously because I, I don't. I don't yeah, know. I use it a lot actually for my little brother. I would, you know, I you know send him stuff to play for his Wii. So, okay. Uh, I, I think that I think they'll bring it back because uh, you know obviously it makes them money. You know, so yeah. system update. That's all it right. takes. That's all it takes. So, um, yeah, I, I used to use it a lot because um, I want to, you know, I want, I, I want to groom my little brother on some of the stuff I used to play back in the day. So, I want him playing some of those, uh, you know, NES games, SNES games and stuff. So I send him, he play them. So I used to send them to him all the time. He played so. Mm. Well, does anybody else have one final topic to bring up besides oh. what we've played lately? Oh, the one. Uh, did you notice that Nintendo Space at E3 this year is Quite bigger than <laughs> Sony's, especially. Oh, Microsoft's Lord. got a big part too. Trolling to troll the face, end. troll face, troll face. Three, two. No There's... trolls, trolls. I think it's time to just just go to sleep or something. <laughs> Their space was really small last year. Their, their space wasn't that big last year. It was uh, yeah. it was it was a fraction of the size of Microsoft and Sony's last year. So. Yeah. So this now this is like to believe that they're gonna have a lot of stuff to show possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I really like the way they design their booths. Like they just make them so like happy. And it's fun. Nintendo, it's <laughs> Nintendo World, basically. When you go to there, yeah. it's Nintendo World. When you go to their, I'm just like, how did they not come up with their own theme park yet? Like God, like that just gets me. It's just you see, like every time I see Sony and Microsoft, I'm just like, uh... but then when I see Nintendo, I'm just like, what? What the frick? There's it's like so much life in here. Why is there so much color? There's not supposed to be color in here. What the frick is this? <laughs> like, you know, I just... I, I, they make the booths just look really, like, presenting. Like, mm. wow. I, I know many people were taking last year uh, with all those things, like with the Pikmin and Donkey Kong uh, and, of course, the Mario Kart uh, uh, thing there. Like, they were all taking pictures there, too. <laughs> and especially, oh, yeah. And especially, of course, all the guys, you know, taking pictures with the Bayonetta cosplay. <laughs> and... <Yeah. laughs> You know, I don't know. They just they they have like I don't know. Nintendo does good with games and friggin' booth. Like God dang, I don't know. Nintendo <laughs> charm, man. Nintendo charm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, I I really think just because of their big huge space, like they literally have like one big section and then like like a little little tiny box section on the right. So it's like, whoa, that's pretty. I don't know what how many booths you're gonna have. Was it it wasn't one of those sections like a little theater or something? And like it, it was um it's like a box um beside the huge rectangle. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking. Probably, I mean the main booth, uh, that little yeah. rectangle. It, yeah. 
it's kind of an upside down and reversed L shape. So it seems like if you're if you're coming from the bottom of that 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 slide, which I would imagine is 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 accurate, if you're coming from the bottom of that slide, it's almost like it's set up for a line to form all the way down the hall going to their their booth. So yeah. you can see the line either wrapped right around the corner from another section somewhere else, or coming all the way down the the whole part of that hall. And people, mm-hmm. it, you just go straight into their stuff, and then you could go all the way around the corner and then leave going out. It's almost like it's kind of efficient. So it seems like the very top right it would be the exit, and mm-hmm. that's where you would come out. But yeah, if, if that's if that's the way it's laid out, then that'd be great. But I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. But it, it, to me, that's what it looks like. How that's how it's laid out for. Maximum throughput. Well, that's going to make for an interesting E3, I tell you what. Yeah, because they're make- doing everything different. Mm-hmm. Looks like they're going to pull out all stops, and plus they're supposed to have the treehouse guys um, talking. That's what that's what I like with the whole digital event now. If Now that they're doing it like this, where literally they have not one, but like three streams... Right now, so far that we know, the Treehouse event, the main, uh, of course, the digital, the main one where they announce all the games, and um, the Super Smash Brothers, uh, mm, live the, the tournament. Yeah, and I'm just like, bro, they're they're literally going all out. Like, you got like one stream. Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna come up with like two more streams because supposedly they're supposed to have two more. So it's like to uh, <laughs> develop a roundtables. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna have uh, more developer roundtables and stuff like that with more live streams. So it's like, literally, it's like a news. How could I say? It's like the press. Literally, it's like uh, let's say the media in like uh, live streaming all this stuff, but it's just Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, that's the best thing about it is that mm-hmm. it, instead of you know getting the news uh, through a filter from the journalists, <laughs> as we like to call them, it's gonna be straight gaming stuff without you know. Blah 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 blah, and a Wii U dig at the end. You know, <laughs> it, it's gonna be about you know the game, and that's it. And no, no filter, no. Well, uh, Nintendo wasn't doing so great. Wii U wasn't doing so great right now, but hopefully this game. Blah blah blah. None of that crap. Just yeah. straight game stuff. You know, and that's what that's the best thing about it. That makes Wait, me every, wonder. Yeah, is there gonna be a Twitch app for the Wii U? Because you know, it doesn't need it. I'm gonna say this you... because we have the web web browser. But get, but guess what though? Like the vast majority of the top fighting game players in the world are going to be at this, uh, at this invitation, right? And yeah. so, what are all these people going to watch this on? They're probably not going to watch it on Nintendo stream. You know They're going to watch you know, it on Twitch. You know what's the thing though? Um, we can watch live streams from YouTube from the web browser, and the thing is, on Meverse, they use YouTube uh, URLs to po- post their uh, YouTube videos. So literally, they could live stream uh, the event through Meverse. I, I'm not talking about the potential of the system. I'm saying that because because of the customers themselves, the majority of the people there, a lot of people that are not Wii U owners are going to be going to watch this because you know, they're, they're they're fighting game fans and they normally watch they want normally watch everything via Twitch. So I'm know, wondering, they could, are they going to do something like that? They could do that too on Meverse, actually. Like they could literally like I yeah I, yeah I know it's like power people but I'm just like yeah they if they want to view it on Twitch they could Nintendo could literally put a URL there and literally put it on Meverse so that way people can watch it and stuff like that. I'm yeah, wondering. I think you're saying I think uh, uh, <sighs> yeah, Fox, I think what you're saying is that the you know the guys who don't have Wii U's uh, the tournament uh, the fighter guys. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're Twitch guys. They're, yeah, they're Twitch guys. So there are probably, they'll, I'm sure there'll be a few people out there that'll be, you know, uh, filming for live stream for Twitch. I don't see why they wouldn't be doing that. I mean, I'm sure somebody's going to be out there doing that. Um, I mean, you got sure you can followers. You got people right. that follow all these all these other different fighting groups, MLG people. I mean, some everybody is gonna be gonna be watching this. So I'm I'm wondering if you know Nintendo's gonna be like, hey, now announcing we have a Twitch app or we have a, a Twitch HTML5 app to where you can watch it through the Wii U browser or something similar to that nature, where they right. could you know even if the Wii U doesn't have that horsepower, guess what? We're in the, we're in the world of the cloud, right? So you could go to Twitch.Nintendo.com. Through your browser, and pff, there it is. So I'm I'm wondering if something like that is is possible, or is that what they're alluding to by doing this invitation? Well, a funny story. Uh, <laughs> it kind of 
wraps all this together is that uh, a few months ago when uh, Braden Cole uh, did a live stream, a 24-hour uh, Twitch uh, live stream, uh, I was having trouble on my Mac back then. Uh, I had a different Mac uh, desktop. Uh, and what I did is I went on my Wii U, <laughs> used a web browser on my Wii U, and I could at least get the audio. I couldn't see okay. it, but uh, the audio was working. Actually, the video was working on uh, on that while the audio worked on my computer. So it's, it's natively it's supported. Yeah, yeah. It, it's natively supported, at least with the browser. So it's not a stretch to see that happen. Mm. Yeah, they gotta I'm, go off. They have, they have to go off though, because I noticed that like the Wii U bre- web because bre- you know how you can change it with like Chrome, like, Internet Explorer and like such. Yeah, the user oh. agent. Yeah, the user agent. So literally, they could, um, they I would recommend if they're gonna do that, they have to use it with the Chrome one, because actually that one works best for video playback. Well, I'm I'm looking right now. It ha- it can't be secure though. I'm looking right now at a developer note. Um, you can append the HLS tag, and you can embed a HTML5 player to any HTML5 uh, website. So mm-hmm. it's technically possible on Wii U mm-hmm. as a client. So it won't work in Android Chrome for some reason, but it works in OS 10 and Safari mm-hmm. and Internet Explorer on Windows 8. So... I don't see why it wouldn't work on Wii U. Mm. Android is probably because it doesn't have all of the WebKit stuff. So, I, I'm thinking I'm thinking it'll work. We'll we'll have to see though. Okay. Well, I guess that's about time for us to wrap things up here, guys. We went a little bit over. Uh, <laughs> a tad bit. Sorry. <laughs> we went a tad bit over, but then again, it's been a while since we all got together and chatted. So, um. Yeah. I guess we're going to be ready to do our sign-offs, and I'm going to be doing the sign-offs from my right to my left, starting off with Zen Gamer. Yo, thank you guys for watching. You're, um, God, getting freaking <laughs> <laughs> jumbled here. Uh, that usually doesn't happen. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching uh, Gamers at Large. Make sure to check out the ZGZs and Gamer Zone. I'll be having a live stream similar to this on Tuesday. Make sure you take a look at it on Monday. I hope to have another analysis up. So, as the beginning of the week, guys, I'm not promising a whole week. Things are pretty busy on my end, so I'm sure you understand. But uh, look out for those. Okay. And up next, we got Shadow Fox. All right, Shadow Fox Prime, Shadow Fox Infinite. Um, you know what it is. Follow me on Twitter and uh, PureVideoGames.net, and I'll be putting up a lot more content from this point forward. So. Uh, look for me and um, get at gamers at large and and various other places. Who knows? Maybe even PE Network. Okay. And up next we got Mr. T. Mr. T, do your thing. Hey, fools! It's Mr. T. The Mr. T Show. Uh, another awesome podcast with my fellas here. Uh, as I said, uh, I was sick this week, so obviously I haven't had done any videos all week. But uh, should be a nice trickle of videos coming there next week, um, including the Wii U Gamepad Advantage video. So look out for that. Okay, and up next we got Mr. Butterworth. Do your thing. Well, guys, it's been real. Um, as always, be sure to check out my channel, Butterworthy. I'll be doing a Q&A video in the next uh, day or two, so if you have any burning questions for me, hit my channel up, and uh, I'll think of some more things this week. But I'll catch you guys next time. All right, and up next is Games. Games, do your thing. Well, thank you for watching. Games took a little break outside. <laughs> I'm totally what the GSPD in. So, thank you for watching the Gamers at Large podcast. Hopefully, you guys will join in next time on the next episode. Make sure to go check out E3 at the uh, Nintendo booth. Yeah, yeah, do that. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, then. And finally, it's me, QMC Quant Man 2, bidding you all an adieu. And as I always say, everybody, Whatever's clever. We're out. Please understand.